Hello, and welcome to a very special episode of Todd Talk, because I'm Todd Talks, people listen. Oh boy. So today, as teased last week, I am doing a death battle predict- I should have like text here. Death battle predictions episode, because season eight, it's coming. And Ben Singer and Luis, the animator, and everyone else is saying that this is going to be a major season of Death Battle. Not just because it's the 10th anniversary, but because they are trying to make every episode feel like it's a you know season starter, season ender episode. A grand scale battle uh, from every single one, which is quite the claim because as great as death battle is there are down episodes there are always down episodes i mean there's ones that you know shoot high like with beerus versus galaxia and then there's like black canary versus sindel which was fine but you know we could do better so today i am going to uh state ones that i want to see i want to I'm going to state ones that you have told me you wanted to see and uh, throw in some fun ones that we honestly probably should see. All right, so let's get started. Now, to be clear, I am not going to address all of the uh, teased characters that was in the eight, uh, Season 8 teaser. Because while we, I now know who all of them are, not all of them have an outright clear uh, opponent. For example, Doctor Doom. Or uh, if it's Luke or Yoda, like... who. Who would you put against those characters? And uh, the Attack on Titan character, it's still not immediately clear who that person was from Attack on Titan. So, you know, I don't, I wouldn't know who to put against them. So, I, we will be addressing a couple of them, though, including starting out Link versus Cloud. This was all but confirmed, because not only did they tease Cloud, and Cloud's, like, ultimate rival in video games is, I know Sephiroth, but in terms of versus matchups is Link. Uh, we we kind of knew this was coming, and then in the last death battle cast, Ben heavily, heavily implied that it's Link versus Cloud because he said that you might get a long requested rematch in the style of Mario versus Sonic. So, yeah, we're go we're gonna get Link versus Cloud too, and I'm fine with this because that was you know it was an early death battle. It was the first 3D death battle, and it was actually pretty good for the times, and. You know, this they these characters have grown in a certain ways, especially with Final Fantasy Remake and Breath of the Wild and everything else. Because if I recall correctly, um, the, the references they used for Cloud was, of course, the main game and Cydia because of the materia and uh, technically Advent Children. And then Link, uh, Link was Breath of the Wild, up, up to Breath of the Wild. Like they mentioned, like D uh, the Duranius Shield. Uh, being you know indestructible and all of that, and, like and they showed the th the thunder god, but um, so like that's where they were, but they've both grown since then. So how and it, of course the new death battle rules, which of course was different from how uh it was in season one, like when they did Mario and Sonic, that kind of even things up because there was a lot of things that were taken out for both sides. For so like Cloud couldn't use summons and. Uh, Link couldn't have the fairy to revive him if he got KO'd, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that matchup is all but confirmed. So we'll, I, we, we can look for, forward to that one. That better be 3D. I mean, why would you go from 3D to 2D? That doesn't even make sense. Uh, second one. Okay, this one was recommended to me, and I saw this on a death battle, uh, a community death battle, and I thought this was really fun. Storm versus Korra from Legend of Korra. And of course, Storm from X Men. Uh, this is a fun matchup because these are, you know, leading ladies of elements. You know, Storm's mutation is being able to control the weather, and Korra is the Avatar. So there's a there's a lot of ways that could work. I mean, th this is a fun community death battle because you have to think, okay, Korra is going to be grounded at first, and Storm can fly. But of course, as we saw in like the season three finale, she can use her uh, fire bending to rocket her up into the air. Uh, Storm has claustrophobia, so you think, okay, well, if Korra can get her on the ground, she can earthbend around her and, you know, cause a panic attack. But Storm also has been, technically, a demigod. And I don't mean just because she's called the goddess in Africa. Um, but she actually wielded a, uh, like, an Asgardian hammer. And so, uh, yeah, she was basically a god for a while. It happened. So there, there's a lot of fun things here. And honestly, I wouldn't know who else to put Korra with. 
I mean, with Aang, I, I like the idea of, you know, you know, Bender versus, you know, uh, Alchemist with Edward Elric, which was a great fight. I really like that one. But, you know, it, I, with Korra, it, I don't think there's as many good options, like worthy options. And Storm is perfect. So I, I, I'll be up for that one. Uh, here's another one. This is our, we're going to do a few uh, DC versus Marvel because you know this is coming. I mean, as good as much as they're building this as a magnificent season, we all know we're going to get at least three, maybe four, possibly five uh, DC versus Marvel matchups. I mean, it's just inevitable. So the first one is another actually community death battle. It was uh, Apocalypse from X-Men versus Black Adam from uh, DC Comics and uh, the Shazam stories. So this one's interesting because these are very much survival of the fittest. The strongest will survive, you know, judge, jury, executioner. Who would win in that mindset? Because remember, Apocalypse is an opponent who, at his peak of power, which has been numerous times in the comics, uh, can just wipe the floor with the X-Men. I mean, he's massively powerful and massively devious. He's one of the most cunning minds in all of the all the Marvel comics. And I, and I say that knowing how many smart people we have out there in Marvel. But he's just so brilliant and he always working an angle in that always just burns people. Anybody's been reading like uh, the the recent X-Men reboot thing uh, with the X of uh, Don of X and all that. It's been good. And, and Apocalypse just has this huge storyline in X of Swords. And, you know, he's been he's proven his power, his will, his dominance. And then you got Black Adam, who is, of course, a champion of the wizard. Uh, and we already know that he's on par with Shazam, who we saw in Captain Marvel fight, in the Captain Marvel's fight. And so we, and he has no inhibitors. He doesn't, he doesn't need the death battle rules to kill Apocalypse. He'll kill Apocalypse. He doesn't care. All right. If he thinks he threatens Kondok or someone he cares about, he'll kill the mother effer. He doesn't care at all. All right. So this is going to be an interesting one because it's, you know, natural mutation, the first mutant versus you know, the, the leader of Kondok and uh, the, the champion of, of the wizard and, you know, of being imbued by the gods. So that's, that's that, I think that's an interesting matchup. But this one, I want it to be 3D. I'd love this one to be 3D. But I think they'll do 2D here because of the sprites they'll probably have access to. But this will still be a fun fight to figure out because that's not an easy thing to counter. Because again, we saw how Shazam was as powerful as you know, had the power of Zeus and how that, you know, registered into, you know, creating a black hole with his punch. So does that mean, does Apocalypse have something to counter that? I don't know. Uh, okay, this one's all me. This one I totally want, and it's uh, Deadshot versus Bullseye. And this is as simple as simple it could be. These are the top assassins, technically. These are the top assassins, the top marksmen in their various universes. I know some people will say it's Deathstroke, but they actually show that Deadshot can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Deathstroke for five days in the, the War of Jokes and Riddles. So go with me on this. Why I want this fight is simple, because we've had characters with guns. We've had characters, you know, with bows and arrows and all that stuff. But I, this is a literal point for point, shot for shot, who misses first? Because these characters are known for not missing. And Deadshot's line is, I don't miss. That's why he's a top assassin. That's why you call him when you need to make an impossibly tricky shot. All right. And Floyd Lawton is just that good. But so is Bullseye. I mean, Bullseye's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Daredevil. We all know how great he is. He's killed Elektra kind of, and she, she got better, <laughs> and uh, he, he was a dark Avenger, he, uh, you know, he's done all sorts of things, and these guys are just incredibly deadly accurate, and I want this to be a actual super cool gunfight, uh, and then yes, I know Bullseye uses, you know, the Psy and, and, and a whole bunch of other things, but uh, I mean, I was going to get Daredevil 2003 joke here, but I won't. So, but between, you know, the various versions of Bullseye and the various versions of Deadshot, this would just be a really cool 3D, you know, seeing the bullets collide with one another and them dodging to see, you know, how many times they can make each other miss. But, you know, I think that would be a really cool visual. And I don't think that Death Bell has technically done something like this before. Even with something like, you know, uh, Widowmaker versus Black Widow, that wasn't really a gun versus gun fight. It was more of, you know, who is the more skilled Russia? This is the who is the most skilled assassin. 
And I, I find a lot of interest in that. Uh, okay, next one. This is an all-time classic. Uh, James Bond versus Agent 47. Yeah. So this is one of two contenders I'm going to put out for the um, live action fight that we all expect we're going to get in this season because they've, again, basically confirmed that Isma Hawk is going to work with them again. I don't know what the restrictions are in Las Vegas right now, but obviously they got time. I mean, they might do this as a later fight in season A because, they, they uh, again, the season doesn't start till March, so they clearly got time. So this is an all-time classic because this is two super spies. This is, you know, James Bond, the uh, epitome of Swamp de Banal, you know, Bond, James Bond, you know, that kind of thing. And then you got Agent 47, who's the more cold-blooded killing assassin. You know, I will get the job done. I don't care. I have to climb up a skyscraper to go and get it done. So this will be fun in live action. Here, here's another gunfight, you know, you know, who can, you know, sneak up on him, who has the moves to get the bullet kill in. You know, there's a lot of ways they could have fun with this in live action. And honestly, I wouldn't want this in animated because while obviously Hitman was born in the animated uh, universe, James Bond's only been there a couple, okay, not a couple of times, but he's been there not as well. I mean, and they, they're not going to use like the original GoldenEye models, obviously, and they could use the modern GoldenEye with the Daniel Craig avatar, but that's not the same. And they had like the Pierce Brosnan in game, like was it Nightfire or something like that? It's not the same. It's not the same. So let's, let's do this live action. Let's have a lot of fun and be done with it. Uh, okay, here's the one that we also basically have confirmed. Uh, Dio from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure versus Alucard Helsing from the show with his name. Uh, this matchup has been long requested and was a DVX a, a while back. And it's not hard to see why. These guys are vampires and they both suck. So, uh, but no, the reason we know this one's coming is that uh, during uh, Saber Wolf versus uh, John Talbane, they made, uh, Wiz made a joke about how next year was the vampire episode. So we already had Dracula versus Ganon, and so that's one vampire out of the way. So the other one is Dio versus Alucard. Um, the only catch with this one that I see is that they were in uh, Liam, who's like one of the head writers and, and now director for Death Battle said that the problem was that Alucard can't die. Like, he's, like, infinitely immortal or something like that. And not in the whole, like, green door or, or a certain other immortality feats that we've seen. But, like, he just can't die. <laughs> so, apparently, they have figured out how he can die or if there is even a chance of him of dying so that this could at least potentially be a fun matchup. Because if a character can't die and another can, like, that's not a fun matchup. Because it's, like, it's inevitable that they're going to win. So if they figured that out, all on them. All, or great for them. Uh, okay, yeah, this one is the, uh, this next one is the potential season finale that we've all been asking for for so long. Galactus Unicron. Yeah. So this one is the... Uh, we need it. <laughs> They've been saying it for years. They, they were going to get this fight that, you know, they, they know it's going to be 3D and it's got to be, you know, a universe ender like Broly and Hulk and all, and all of them, Galactus, uh, Galactia, Galaxia Beerus and all of that. But no, we need Galactus Unicron. And it's not hard to see why. These are world eaters. These are the ultimate final bosses, you know, kind of. And uh, there's always a bigger final boss. There, there's, a, there's always a bigger fish. So this one is, is just what you need to see this. This needs to be bigger than Darkseid versus Thanos, which I'm not sure how they would have pulled that off. But then I saw Hulk Broly, and they kind of did. So make it happen. <laughs> okay. We've been teased enough. All right. You've done, you've done the big, you've done, you know, Epic universe. See, they're they're paying themselves into a corner here. All right, I'm I'm just being serious here. They did Thanos Dark Side, and then they kind of toned it down a little bit with uh, All Might Mike Guy, which I still love. Great battle. But then they ramped it right back up, and they did you know Hulk Broly. And so that's two out of the last three season finales have been universe enders. They they're painting themselves into a corner, <laughs> so they have to keep it going with the universal destruction. So yes, Galactus, Unitron, make it happen. All right, this one I know you all are going to roll your eyes at, but I got to say it anyway. 
Sly Cooper versus Rocket Raccoon. Yes, I know. I did a whole video about this. I'll link it in below if you haven't seen it. But I, my dream, my personal dream matchup is Sly Cooper versus Rocket Raccoon. I even hired Brandon Yates himself, one of the mega composers of Death Battle, to make a song for me. Uh, it's called A Tale of Ring Tales. And I think that this is a really fun matchup because it's a contrast of styles. Sly has made his career out of beating people who were stronger, faster, and better armed than him. Rocket has built his career out of having the weapons to kill anybody, doesn't matter what their skill set is. So which one is better? Sly's got the gadgets, but uh, Rocket's got the weapons. You know, Sly is a little bit better on thinking on his feet. Rocket's a little bit impulsive. Uh, Rocket just doesn't care about how much he destroys Sly, likes a more finesse approach. I love this matchup, and for all of you thinking Sly has no chance, look up Sly Cooper 4, there is one thing that Rocket can't counter. Whether that would lead to a kill shot, I do not know, and I, I have researched this fight, I've even planned out the fight in my head, and again, link below to my uh, pitch for Rocket vs. Sly Cooper, where I dive into more detail about this, but I want this to happen. I doubt it'll happen this, this season. I'm working on trying to get in with Death Battle, but uh, I would love to see this. I really, really would. Uh, all right, this was another one uh, recommended to me: Little Mac versus Epo. I, I, Ipo. I, I don't know the anime name, so I think it's I think it's Epo. But this is another classic boxing match, and uh, we all remember how fun Balrog versus TJ Combo was. Loved it. One of my all-time favorites. So this is just another style of it. This is like more animated. You know, yeah, sure, Balrog and TJ Combo, they all have their flashy moves, but this is, like, this is more. I think this is like, even more fun with, like, the star punch and, you know, just the, un, you know, the small size, but the great pa boxing power. This would be a fun little matchup. They could do this in, two, in 3D, or sorry, 2D, because I think they can get away with it. If they could do 3D, then sweet. But uh, this will just be fun, you know, who can, who lasts. You know, this isn't about power. This is about endurance. This is about, you know, taking the hits and keep going. And... I think that's a lot of fun. All right, next up after that, we have... Oh, this was one that I saw in a, in a community death battle, and I really like the idea of this. Um, Akuma from Street Fighter versus Liu Kang from Mortal Kombat, a character who, ironically, we have not had in death battle yet in regards to Liu Kang. And then he's like the protagonist. How does that, how does that work? But yeah, they uh, this one was posed on Death Battle cast, and it was actually really, really close. I think actually it was uh, East Mohawk, uh, Danny Shepard, who pitched this one, I believe, I think. But um, I like this matchup because it's, you know, Street Fighter versus Mortal Kombat. We've already, we've seen this a bunch before, but this is, this is never going to get old. And it's really about, like, the god-tier powers. You got, you got Shinokuma, and then you got, you know, Fire God uh, Liu Kang, and how will that all play out? You know, would the... Uh, 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 suck. Uh, not Assassin's Fist. Um, Raging Demon, thank you. The Raging Demon, would that work on Liu Kang? I think it would, but would he be able to hit it? You know, because we saw that with, you know, uh, Ryu versus Scorpion. Just because you have the Raging Demon doesn't mean you're actually going to hit it. So, mm, it's, 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 I, I think this could be fun. So, that definitely need to be a 3D fight, though. Just saying. Um, let's see what's next. Oh yeah, this is an, this is one from the teaser. We saw the van of uh, Steven Universe's dad. So clearly the dad's going to be in a death battle. I can't. No, uh, Steven Universe and the only logical kind of uh, person to go up against him is Star Butterfly from Star vs. the Forces of Evil, uh, a show that I've never seen. I was turned off when I saw the full trailer for it. The teaser for it was great. The, the full trailer I did not like, and I was immediately turned off. And it only went like two seasons. So, you know, make of that what you will. But apparently they really want this matchup because these are two, like, you know, universe, ah ha ha, uh, all powers. And they both have really powerful skills and both beloved characters somehow. No, I, I've heard a lot about Steven Universe. I heard it's really good. But um, I, I'm for it. You know, if, if you want to do it, do it, you know? Uh, okay, we're getting close to the end. Getting close to the end. Next up, we have... This is another one I personally want because of a DBX that I saw. Uh, Yang versus Bakugo. I actually saw this in a DBX and a One Minute Melee. But Yang versus Bakugo. The Masters of Explosion Fists. Um, this one I have seen played out two different ways. I believe the One Minute Melee had Yang winning. And then the DBX had Bakugo winning, I think. 
And this one's just, it's right there. It's so right there. I mean, I know why they did Yang Tifa and that was totally fine. But this is just that little bit extra of, you know, hot tempered, you know, fiery fists, you know, explosion in your face, chewing you out while I'm beating you down. And I'm, I'm finally getting into My Hero Academia. I'm on uh, season three right now. But uh, Bakugo is, a, is an interesting character, and uh, Yang would be able to so push his buttons. But Bakugo's no fool when it comes to combat. He knows how to get things done. So the question is, you know, would a Yang semblance be able to not just absorb, but redirect to, to Bakugo enough before she gets blown up? I like that idea. And not of Yang getting blown up, but the idea of, you know, the kind of fight. And, you know, Yang's no slouch, obviously. She's got lots of combat training. She was, they're both trained at academies, so there's another, you know, tie to them together. Um, both star peoples in their own rights. Um, they're, it's, I like a lot of the similarities, and I think this would be a lot of fun, especially if they were able to do this in uh, 3D. Though, I mean, I've seen this in 2D twice, so I really would like this in 3D. And they've done that with all the Ruby characters so far, so... And uh, which brings us to our second to last one. Uh, this isn't in any order. It's just how I wrote them down for the record. Uh, Blake versus Mikasa. Uh, this was Mikasa was teased in the uh, season eight uh, teaser. And I think it's a Gamiga kill or kill a kill. I can't remember now, but uh, it's an anime. <laughs> and Blake apparently is a worthy uh, foe for her. It's her, right? I really don't know this character, but um uh, I'm fine with it. We've had every Ruby character outside of Blake and Yen, uh, Ruby, and we all know right Ruby isn't being used because of her arc and her Silver Eyes powers. But uh, we all know the matchup she's gonna get because of Montium, rest in peace. But uh, yeah, I've, I I'm fine with it. I mean, this was actually requested by one of you, so thank you for that. But uh, I'm fine with it if if want to bring in Blake. Blake's tricky because of her, not just her weapon, but her semblance with the whole, she can create a, a different form of herself and like leap out of it. So it can be stone, it can be ice, it can be fire, you know, something like that. Um, I can't remember what the actual name for it is though, but it's like, it's an escape mechanism, which is great for her. So I'm, I'm all for it. That'll be a fun 3D fight. And of course we'll totally get the Blake voice actress to help out. And sounds like a lot of fun. Now, I mentioned earlier that I had two ideas for a live action a death battle fight, and I pitched this one actually to Danny himself on Twitter. Um, a while back, there was a uh, question about who would win between uh, Wonder Woman. It's not a Wonder Woman fight. I know we already had that. It's not a Wonder Woman fight. Uh, Wonder Woman versus Okoye from the uh, from Black Panther. And everyone, logically, said that Wonder Woman would win for a thousand reasons, but not the least of which is they wouldn't fight. They would honestly get along. You know, they're, they're, if you think about it, the Dora Miyage are their own are their own kind of Amazon, I'm just saying. But then, of course, the, the thought went to, you know, Black Panther versus Wonder Woman, and I still think Wonder Woman would win, even with the Panther habit, because Wonder Woman would be able to overload it rather easily. So what's the what's the matchup here? It actually has to do, go back to Okoye. But it also has to do with Diana. My idea for a truly special death battle, one that technically has not been done in this style before. I'm not counting Red versus Blue because that was a special thing. I want a five on five death battle. Okoye and four Dora Miyage versus Hippolyta and four Amazons. Yeah. Because think about it. These are both warrior women, classes, races, basically. Um, they are the best trained of, of their, uh, what do you want to call it, species, of their, pe of their people, there we go, uh, outside of Black Panther, obviously, and Diana, but Diana's an, Diana's an Amazon, but Hippolyta is, you know, basically immortal, hundreds and thousands of years of experience, has fought the gods, has fought monsters, has fought her own daughter, has definitely fought the Justice League, and, but then he got, you know, Okoye, who's basically the right hand of, of uh, T'Challa himself, among the others of the royal family, uh, has the technology to uh, fight some of the stronger monsters of the Marvel Universe, including having her own series multiple times, including uh, Black Panther and the Agents of Wakanda, a series that should not have been canceled as quickly as it was. And so I think it would be fun to have this in live action, especially with the Wonder Woman movies and, you know, Okoye and Black Panther movies, because we all know she's coming back. But a five-on-five live-action death battle of the Amazons versus the Dora Miyage. 
because the Dormiage obviously have the better weapons because they have the Vibranium, but the Vibranium doesn't cover everything. Their faces and their arms and their legs are technically exposed. Versus the Amazons who train literally all their lives for the potential of uh, defending the world of man against the underworld or the gods or, or just man. And so they may have more primitive weapons, but they know how to use them really, really well. And obviously both Polita and Okoye are very competent leaders. So who would win in that battle? Not just winning in a fight, but leading their, uh, you know, their warriors into battle. I think that would be a really fun death battle for uh, Ismahawk to tackle. And it would be a, a live action female death battle. What's what's wrong with that? First two have all been guys. Let's let's get the let's get the ladies in there. Come on. They deserve this. And I think this will be a really fun fight, not just to see, you know, broken down, but also just to see fight because, you know, East Mahawk Mah does really good work. So with that, that's, uh, let's see, what was that? That was 12 death battles for you. I know this was going to be like, tw like 16 to 20, but uh, I think that's a, that's a good start for you all. So with that, I'm ending this episode of Todd Talk. What do you think? is going to happen in Season 8 of Death Battle. What are the matchups you personally want to see? And which ones of my list did you think were actually pretty cool and you'd like to see in Season 8 or beyond yourself? Let me know in the comments below. And just so you know, this will sadly be the last Todd Talk until Death Battle returns, barring something happening. So um, just stay tuned. I will be back, and we will all be enjoying Death Battle together. So I thank you for watching. If you made it as far, I know you were listening, and I'll see you around.